Welcome to Meva Analysis for Hedgehogs. So I moved my place and from now on this will be my new malware fighting lab. Um, now in the last couple of days I got several remarks and comments um, saying something along the lines of you need to write malware to become a good malware analyst. Um, let's check this out. So here's one of those, uh, the only one I got in English actually. <laughs> um, it says, I would suggest to spend a year or two learning to write malware, practice releasing it in the wild, get really good at being a black hat, build a large resume of exploits and then use that for experience. Just be honest with the interviewer, they can hire you or hire someone else to try and stop you. HR of self-motivated go-getters. Um, and um, the German ones, um, I will still show them in case you know German, but yeah, it basically the question is um, how um, closely related are Maver and Maver creators. And um, the second one said, um, I uh, also wrote a Trojan in my youth. Um, I pretended to be 12 year old in the chat and it, the Trojan was not detected. Uh, by any of the antivirus programs. I binded it with JPEG files and um, I could have could have extorted people, but it wasn't my humor. <laughs> um, and I'm proud of that. I want to know if that's, this is advantageous for cybersecurity. So there are actually several questions. Um, let's start with the easiest first. That's Thus, HR, human resources, like to see people who say, say they um, have experience writing malware. Um, that's a clear no from me. Um, of course, I can only speak for the company I work for and for our hiring practices. Um, but I assume that for all antivirus companies, at least this is the same. Um, there is this conspiracy theory that antivirus companies only, um, that they write malware so they can get better sales. Uh, it's like similar to the conspiracy that the pharmacy industry creates illnesses uh, to sell their medications. Um, that's actually, just to be clear, it's not true. It's a conspiracy. Um, we don't need to do that simply because there's enough malware out there without us doing anything. So why would we spend our um, time with writing something where what we have plenty of? So um, doesn't make sense. So, but uh, just because this myth always comes up and also because the antivirus companies do not want to um, add fuel to the fire or get a bad reputation. They will never hire anyone who openly boasts about having written malware. So if you are, I mean, how would people get to know that you hire such people? That is, if you have someone in the company who openly talks about it because they are proud of it. And uh, yeah, that's exactly a reason not to hire you. It would be a red flag, actually. And the other thing that um, I would, as a someone who employs people, I would think, well, they are doing unethical things. Uh, they are doing criminal things. Why should I take the risk and hire them? And then maybe they do something criminal in my company so they could let's say um, use this um, internal knowledge to do something bad so no i totally would not do that so i don't know why people get the idea that this is like beneficial for hr um, to hear that you did black hat stuff so it's not um, if you did that and you want to turn your you know, path around and become uh, employed in cybersecurity. Shut up about it. I mean, this this person um, I who I, who said they they um, wrote Mever as a um, teenager. I told them the same, 
And they said something like, oh, you are uh, <laughs> bigoted to believe that no one in your company has written malware before. Um, now, there's a huge difference, in my opinion, um, between writing malware without releasing it to the wild. So, and just, you know, to have some exercise going on and writing malware and infecting systems with it. Um, and being proud of it. <laughs> like the proud aspect is actually killing me. Um, did we employ people who wrote malware? Yeah, we had a student who wrote a malware and simultaneously wrote the antidote to it. So he, let's say he explored um, a certain technique to evade antivirus detection. Uh, and the way, but the way this is usually done is, um, you know, that you, you do not write actual malicious code. Uh, but you can use something like ICAR, which is an antivirus test file, um, and put that into the final payload so that your creation isn't actually malicious, but detected by all antivirus programs. So you can test um, if your evasion technique works so that the payload is not detected. Um, yeah. We had such people, we had with an intern like that, but that's an entirely different thing. Um, the other question that was um, asked in here it was like uh, along the lines of, is this advantageous or are the skills advantageous uh, to become a malware analyst? Can you, like this person who said they did this at 12 year old, they said something like, yeah, I would be an awesome malware analyst because I had this experience in the past. Now, the thing is that the skill overlap for writing malware and reversing malware is actually quite small, um, surprisingly small. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you need to know like malware types, uh, generally how antiviruses detect malware, um, how malware evades antiviruses in general, but then as a malware writer, you only need to know a few of these things. You need to know one language, and how to write code in it. Um, you actually don't need to know any of the um, ways to make malware undetected if you just buy a binder, packer, a protector, or crypto, whatever. You can buy that if you don't know anything about it. Uh, <laughs> so, but um, I guess if you want to write very good malware, you might also get into uh, like Windows internals topics, but now imagine what's the ideal skill set of a malware analyst. The ideal malware analyst knows every operating system, every compiler and every language, because no matter what malware you throw at them, they can reverse engineer it. Uh, and that's a little bit the reality actually, because no one will, um, you get all kinds of malware. There's no sorting into like you only do the .NET stuff or you only do the uh, C++ malware that doesn't happen in, at least not in our company. <laughs> like you need to know, you need to be able to pick up everything. Of course, no person knows how to read every programming language, how to read every assembly code that exists. Um, so your main skill set is in being able to pick up things quite fast if you need them. So you teach it to yourself. You need to know how to learn on a relatively fast pace. Um, and that's the challenging part about map analysis. Like it's so um, interdisciplinary. You have so many potential things that could be beneficial to know. Um, that it's really hard to say like, this is the skill set that a malware analyst has because everything could be potentially cross your way and um, uh, be, be of help to have a skill in that. So yeah, <laughs> it's not that simple. Um, and if you write malware, you you're not automatically someone who can reverse engineer anything. Let's 
actually think this through using an example. Uh, what do you need to know to write ransomware? One that's like where you have basic quality standards to it being not decryptable, not decryptable by third parties. Um, so if you want to write ransomware, you would need to know how to use at least one programming language to write code in. And you would need to know the basics of cryptography to use um, cryptographic functions in a way that they cannot be broken. Um, and also you would need to know some basics in psychology, uh, how to extort someone effectively so that they pay. How do I make them pay? Uh, how do I make the, the, the likelihood that they pay higher? Um, there are certain tricks used, like there's put some sense of urgency. Um, there's, uh, they will try to scare people. Um, sometimes um, ransomware posed as uh, even the FBI and saying, if you don't pay us, we will put you into jail. Um, so they, they had some set of uh, trying to appear as an authority like Europol or the FBI and um, yeah, they, so there are certain certain tricks being used to raise the likelihood that someone pays. Um, so these are the skills you need. Now, if you want to uh, analyze ransomware, on the other hand, what you want to achieve is firstly you will probably want to write detection signatures depending what your goal is, um, and you will probably want to tell the um, the the customers, uh, the, the persons who asked you for help, hey, um, can I decrypt my files? So you would want to know what encryption algorithm was used and is this crackable? So that's a an entirely different level of cryptography knowledge that you need there because there's using it is easy, but cracking it on the other hand, that requires a little bit more than that, um, actually a lot more, because the ideal analyst, the ideal malware analyst knows all of the cryptographic algorithms and uh, can recognize them if he or she sees them uh, in the code. Um, yeah, of course, that does not exist. Um, <laughs> but um, that's like the skill set that ki that's kind of expected of you. And um, that's really, whereas if you just write ransomware, one of the algorithms is enough. One that's sufficient, one that's uh, secure, that cannot be cracked. Whereas you, as the malware analyst, you need to know all of them, especially the unsafe ones that you can crack. And you need to go into the field of crypt analysis and not only um, cryptography, uh, like knowing how to uh, find weaknesses in the encryption um, procedures. So I think that highlights a bit how useful this knowledge of writing ransomware really is when you are on the other side. Not that much. Um, also, you don't need to write ransomware to learn the cryptography part that you need for malware analysis. Uh, you can just not do the extortion thing um, and use cryptography for something uh, good um, and learn the same. Um, and to the question, how closely related are malware creator, malware analyst? Um, my answer is not really related because anyone who's a software developer is much, much closer uh, when it comes to the skill set than uh, a malware creator. No, no, than a malware analyst to a malware creator. So malware creation is nothing else than software development, if you think about it. It's just software development. And everyone who's a software developer could write a malware. That wraps it up for today. If you have any questions about my job, please ask. And I hope I didn't scare you with the malware analysis requirements. Um, it's... You know, that was just the ideal analyst. Um, but I think it, it highlights how uh, interdisciplinary the field actually is. So yeah, see you next time. And uh, thanks for watching.